Hi, I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com. Mutual fund investors have seen volatility in both their stock and bond portfolios so far in 2018. Joining me to provide a mid-year recap of the action in mutual funds is Russ Kinnell. He's Director of Manager Research for Morningstar. Russ, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad to be here. Russ, um, let's start by talking about bonds because um, even though we have a few days to go here in uh, the first half of 2018, it does seem that some of the losses that mutual fund investors have experienced have been concentrated in their bond holdings. First, what's going on in the bond world that has led to losses in bond funds? Yeah, well, we're seeing signs of rising inflation, and the Fed is responding by raising rates. Uh, and so we're seeing uh, the long end of, of the bond world sell off in anticipation of more rate hikes and possibly more inflation. Uh, you know, we've had, we've talked about the smooth ride in equities. It's right. been even smoother in fixed income. That's for sure. Barely noticed any bumps since 08. And so it hasn't been a disaster, but a lot of bond funds are in the red this year. Okay. In terms of the types of bond funds that have gotten hit the hardest so far in 2018, where have those losses been concentrated? You mentioned long-term has been the hardest hit spot. That's right. So if you have a long end, like a treasury fund or, or a lot of muni funds are longer term, those may be down one or 2% this year. Uh, and, and they're maybe doing the worst. Emerging market bonds have also uh, done poorly. Okay. In terms of the types of bond funds that have held up relatively better, can you talk about those? Yep. Naturally, they're at the other end of the yield sure. curve. So uh, bank loan funds, which ratchet up their, their rates as, as interest rates rise and therefore uh, aren't really affected by rising rates, those are doing the best. Then ultra-short bonds and short-term bonds, because obviously they have very little interest rate exposure. Uh, and then sort of in between the good and the bad is intermediate term bonds, which uh, have, have lost more than, than them. And, and uh, they're in the red uh, about one and a half percent as we speak. Uh, but we've got a couple days left in the month. If investors are looking at their bond holdings, um, how should they be approaching them? I think some investors are very fearful about what might be next for the bond market. Right. Obviously, bonds are, are your more conservative investment, maybe a, a place you go to if you need emergency cash. Right. Uh, but I do think you should have a plan that allows for these kind of blips. I mean, we're talking about, for the most part, funds that are down 1 or 2 percent. That's really minor. That's a regular occurrence. So you certainly shouldn't be surprised by that, and it shouldn't be something that upsets your plan. So I think for sure it, it, it signals that there could be some more uh, headaches along the way, mm -hmm. and you have to have a robust plan. I think it makes sense to be diversified, makes sense to be aware of what kind of credit risk you have, because credit risk is something that for the last few years has done really well, but every once in a while it blows up. So you know, I, I think you want to have understand your plan, but you should be able to handle the, these minor blows to, to the markets. And maybe be careful about taking crazy amounts of duration risk, too, because you mentioned that that part of the bond market has been hardest hit most recently. That's right. Every once in a while, duration risk, so long-term bonds get hit hard because inflation or interest rates spike, and, and so you want to be prepared for that. So diversify not just by credit risk, but also by uh, places on the yield curve. So have some short and intermediate exposure, too. Okay. So um, let's talk about equities, because um, equities did experience some volatility early in the year, like back in February. That seemed mainly sort of inflation, interest rate related. More recently, some of these uh, tariff concerns have roiled stocks. What's, uh, what's get going on in the equity market? and which types of funds have been hardest hit by some of the volatility that we've seen? Yeah, you're right. We've, we've had a, a few ups and downs, both individual company issues as well as uh, some big market issues. And of course, the, the trade dynamics seem to change every day, and that's therefore true. that's part of why it's so volatile is that's changing. And even, even if you say had a, a set uh, deal on, on tariffs today, obviously it takes a while for the markets to really figure out what does that mean for all these individual companies? So uh, the companies that are more affected by these trade wars are definitely the ones whose share prices are hit harder. One thing we've seen so far in 2018 has been the outperformance of growth stocks at the expense of value investing. This is something that's been going on for a while. What's going on there in general, and how has this affected mutual fund performance? 
You're right. So tech and healthcare are really dominant. And a part of the story is just the fangs continue to be so strong. The fangs are Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. And so they're doing really well. And part of what they're, they're doing well at, at, at the uh, uh, stake of, the, of, of some value names, you think of like retail, newspapers, some others, they're, they're essentially taking business away from the value side, and, and that's still showing up. I'm sure at some point it reverses, but once again, large value is the worst place to be. Small growth is the best place uh, for the year to date. Small growth sort of catching up with large growth. Uh, and so if you see uh, smaller cap tech and healthcare names have really done well. Okay, so equity investors might look at this and say, well, value has underperformed for so long. Potentially, is it a place for me to be looking if I'm adding to holdings in my equity portfolio? What's your counsel there in terms of how investors should approach that value versus growth split in their portfolios? Yeah, I think generally you want to be relatively neutral. I, I'm not. Uh, so picky that I think you have to be perfectly split down the middle, but I think you generally want to avoid a big overweight. So if, say, your, your growth uh, funds have really had a big ride, it probably makes sense to rebalance into some value. But to say, what does that mean for the next six months or year or two years, really hard to say. There's no reason growth couldn't continue to outperform. That's too hard to predict the short-term moves. Okay, um, and then moving over to international equity funds, let's talk about what's been going on there. Um, and you mentioned we still have a few days left in the in the quarter until uh, July 1st, but when investors look at their equity fund holdings right now, they are seeing some red ink. What's going on in terms of performance? That's right, so rising in U.S. interest rates once again are a big deal for these overseas equities. Uh, one reason is emerging markets are very sensitive to U.S. interest rates and dollar strength, uh, so that's hurting them. Uh, also, you see, uh, obviously, the trade wars uh, affecting uh, a lot of the markets. Uh, and, and then there are some individual countries, Turkey and Argentina are maybe the, the uh, worst off where, where they're having their own uh, significant problems. So you've got all that going on. Uh, there's some wariness of European banks and uh, financials. And then again, the dollar strength also means that uh, your foreign equity holdings probably don't look so good because most foreign equity funds do not hedge their exposure. So a rising dollar uh, means you're doing worse than the actual markets themselves. In so, currency so, adjusted right, terms. Right, so okay. that's one reason that your typical foreign funds done worse than your typical domestic fund. Okay, when I look down the line at different foreign equity funds, one thing I seem to see is that some of the riskier types of products have been hit a little worse. You mentioned emerging markets, why they have been hit, but it also appears that maybe some of the smaller cap foreign names have been hit harder. What's going on there? Yeah, I think you're right. Part of it is some, something like a risk off right. uh, movement where, where you move out of the riskier uh, plays. Also, I think, uh, again, uh, some of the markets are just affected by the, the trade wars, some of the smaller companies. It's really hitting it almost random because each country is choosing different trade targets to stab at the at their the their rival and and really inflict pain and and they can obviously choose anywhere in, in the other uh, their their rival's economy and so that's hard to predict but it's it's really affecting a a wide array of companies okay Russ thank you so much for being here to provide a mid-year recap of the mutual fund market you're welcome Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com.